.NET developer with 10 years of experience. I worked with .NET Framework, .NET Core, and my latest project is on .NET 6. And uh, today I would like to present you a theme, everything you need to know about uh, unit testing for .NET. Uh, it's just uh, the compression of all useful information for working with unit tests in 2023. And I'm excited to share some knowledge with you all and hope that everyone will learn something new today or just complete the knowledge puzzle related to unit testing. Uh, so this is me. <laughs> I am located in the Chernitsi DC office in Ukraine. And uh, <laughs> my hobbies are I don't know, unusual maybe, but I really like snowboarding and traveling. And also I'm caring about beautiful uh, visual daughter. And uh, let's go to my presentation. <clears throat> uh, this is our agenda for today. I will start with terminology. We'll talk about some definitions, types of tests and why unit testing matters. Uh, then let's summarize some tools uh, needed for unit testing. Um, next, we'll talk about best practices like characteristics of good unit tests, what to test, what not to test, uh, some testing conventions, code coverage, <clears throat> and so on. And also, it's not possible to avoid AI influence on the current unit testing process. So I will cover ChatGPT and Copilot capabilities for unit testing. And also, I will have a couple of demos during uh, during my presentation to not make uh, everything uh, boring. So let's start. Let's start with terminology, and I would like to start with. Uh, automation testing in general, uh, because in a few words, it uh, includes any type of testing that can be automated to verify our functionality, performance, usability of application, etc. <clears throat> and it's important because it helps us to improve the quality of software, catch errors and uh, defects early in the development cycle and give us more stable and reliable project. So, in the chart, you can see how the testing cost uh, grows if you don't have automation on our uh, project because uh, regressions can take longer and it becomes harder. So in the, te uh, in the <clears throat> scope of uh, automation testing, uh, we cannot talk uh, about, we cannot avoid talking about a test pyramid and the types of tests in scope of this pyramid. So. Unit testing is a base uh, as a practice of testing that focuses on verifying the functionality of individual units or components of an application. Uh, unit testing is used to ensure that each individual unit of an application uh, works uh, as we expect. And we can catch uh, defects uh, early during the development process. So usually they are fast to run and more robust and uh, they are easy to write. <clears throat> That's why uh, we can have a lot of unit tests and the recommended amount uh, is 70 percent of all automation tests uh, to be unit tests. Uh, the next stage uh, is integration tests. <clears throat> uh, so uh, in, uh, so if unit test checks small portions of code, uh, integration testing, uh, with integration testing, we can verify the interaction between application modules. These tests check how a code interacts with external components. These components may include some APIs, databases, connections, web services, and similar elements. They are slower to run because of external dependencies, so we need to have lower amount of these tests. It's about uh, 20%. And the last level uh, uh, is end-to-end uh, -end testing or acceptance tests. <clears throat> they are performed to ensure that the application works correctly from end-to-end. And uh, most acceptance tests are carried out using the application's own UI and constitute the top layer of the uh, test pyramid um, because of uh, 
slow running, and approximately we can have uh, about 10% uh, percent of all uh, intended test cases covered with uh, end-to-end tests. Uh, these tests are uh, time consuming uh, because of changing, uh, often changing of requirements and this challenge, it can be challenging to keep these tests as current. And uh, <clears throat> also the actual ratio between uh, unit integration and turn tests depends on your project because maybe for some reasons on your project, it's uh, on your project, project, it requires uh, to have more integration test, uh, tests. So it all depends. <clears throat> and uh, let's move to the best practices, uh, to the benefits of unit tests. Um, to sum up, uh, they help us to ensure that our code works. Uh, we can catch bugs early. We can do refactoring with uh, confidence. And also, it's not obvious, but unit tests uh, can be taken as a documentation as well. And I will talk a bit uh, uh, about this uh, during the demo a bit. Uh, so um, also, guys, I would like to mention that uh, I would like to ask you to leave questions uh, to the end of the presentation because uh, uh, I need to uh, ensure that uh, I can cover everything in time. So. <clears throat> Please be aware of it. Uh, okay, uh, the next topic for today uh, is tooling. And uh, to write unit uh, and integration tests, you need at first test framework. Uh, there are a couple of them, and the most popular are three. So first is an unit. Uh, it's the earliest framework, and unit is an open source testing framework, and it lets you to write and run unit tests uh, on .NET. Uh, then we've got a mass test. Uh, it's a Microsoft testing framework integrated into Visual Studio. And uh, we have XUnit, which is getting more popularity during last year, and um, we use XUnit in my demos. Also, we need to have test runners to run our uh, tests. Uh, usually, we use uh, our uh, IDE. It can be Visual Studio Writer, Visual Studio Code, uh, Visual Code. And also, we can use uh, ReSharper extension. We can use uh, console runners for n unit or for x unit they are free for extension for a sharper extension we need a license uh, we need uh, we should have a license and uh, this um, ideas capability uh, with running tests depends on the version of your ID uh, okay let's go to the uh, next and maybe uh, one of the most important bunch of the tools uh, they are mocking libraries. So uh, they are used uh, to test classes and methods with dependencies. Uh, the most popular and free tools are mock you and substitute and fake it easy. So they have uh, the same purpose, but uh, different syntaxes. Uh, so I've added a couple of um, examples here, how to do the similar functionality with different, with different libraries. Uh, and uh, I will also talk uh, a bit uh, in details in my demo, and I will use and substitute uh, library for that. Let's go to code coverage tools. Uh, so the most popular tools uh, for code coverage are present in the list. Um, actually, code coverage tools, uh, they measure which lines of code are tested and uh, which don't. Uh, fine code coverage, for example, it's free and uh, it's like extension for Visual Studio and we use it on the latest, uh, uh, on my latest project. Um, in case you're using enterprise version of Visual Studio or Rider IDE, uh, they have integrated uh, their own code, uh, code coverage tools. Uh, the cover is integrated into Rider and uh, it's like a really powerful tool, can be used as extension for Visual Studio as well. And it has a 30 days trial period. Uh, on this uh, screenshot, we can see how, how it works and what it shows. So actually our 
the class has two methods. One is covered with that, so we have a green line here, one, uh, and circle is not covered, we have red line, and some uh, results about coverage in percent are in percent are uh, in the bottom and uh, fine code coverage uh, shows you the similar results and also it has some table here uh, for example and depend it's more powerful tool because it can give us uh, also some code static analysis so this is um, the screen of this tool uh, as I remember and crunch it supports uh, supports only um, on a .NET framework and uh, Uncover is also uh, like Visual Studio extension and can, can, be, can be used as well. It depends uh, on your uh, cap capabilities on the project. Um, also, if the percentage of code coverage is low, uh, you can run additional tests. Uh, the recommended code coverage uh, can be like six to 70%, uh, but it also depends. Um, uh, and you don't have to strive to achieve 100% code coverage. It's probably not worth it. Some, uh, some test cases are uh, easier to test man manually, for example. And uh, also it's uh, possible to exclude uh, some classes or methods from code coverage reports. So final report number uh, of coverage will look better. And uh, now we are go going to the best, best practices. <clears throat> so how good unit tests should look like? Uh, of course, it's hard um, to, um, to test huge methods with complicated logic. Uh, that's why uh, at first make sure your new code is clean and structured. Uh, then you can write uh, clean, readable, and maintainable unit tests because you should not spend much time for test debugging. Also, uh, do not have logic inside of uh, the test. So if else for each statement, they are prohibited because you can make a mistake here. So test won't be valid. Uh, that's why maybe probably you need to divide your test to a couple of tests to check some uh, additional flows. And uh, the next characteristic is uh, isolation. Uh, so you should uh, write and execute your tests uh, in the way it's a si single test in the world. And also um, your tests should not be too specific or too general because it won't give you a confidence that production code is working. Uh, so uh, these are uh, how we should uh, consider the good unit tests. Uh, and uh, we also should know uh, what not to test. So um, in, uh, I think in most all, all applications, uh, we have some classes we don't want to test, um, but uh, common candidates uh, for not testing uh, by unit test are primitive models and data transfer objects. Uh, so we can use uh, exclude from code coverage attribute, as I've already mentioned, and, uh, and it won't be use, uh, used in code coverage reports. So we can use it uh, for class or for method, for property. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, usually we don't test C sharp language and third party code because it's not our responsibility. And we should not test private and protected methods because it's an implementation detail. And the unit test should be written to test the behavior of the class through its public interface. It's like a convention. Uh, and also you can ensure that your private and protected methods are covered by unit testing uh, indirectly by testing the public methods. Uh, then we have um, testing conventions. Let's go to the next topic. So testing conventions. Uh, for each project in your solution, you should have test project. Uh, let's imagine we have a project called business logic. In this case, you'll create a separate project called business logic unit tests. In case, if you would like to have integration tests, we need to have a separate project. It's because these tests uh, are running fast and these tests are running slow. 
Uh, also, in this test project, you need to have test class for each class in your production code. So if you have customer class, we need to have customer tests. And it's important to have a pl plural he here because it means that our test uh, class will have a couple of methods. Uh, also, uh, for each uh, uh, for each uh, method in production code, we should have one or more test methods, and the number of tested methods should be uh, and number of tests uh, for that method should be greater or equal to number of execution paths. And we also talk about it during the demo. Uh, we cannot talk, uh, we cannot avoid talking uh, about naming here as well. Uh, so make sure your tests uh, clearly specify the business role you're testing. Because uh, if we um, name our test methods as uh, <laughs> the following, we don't know uh, what is actually done here. And if we use convention like method name, scenario, expected result, out, uh, we can uh, treat our unit tests as a documentation because here we can see the expected result of business rule, uh, rule and it can be like uh, better for understanding and maybe new developers will come see tests and realize what is going on with uh, your class. So for example, if we have method called save customer data uh, for example one scenario of this uh, in this method can be customer exists and the expected uh, behavior is that data is saved successfully also um, some uh, ca uh, we can uh, do that um, for example save customer data can be a huge method with a lot of um, execution pass. So uh, probably it's better to create a separate uh, class only for that method. So convention can be like that. Uh, at first we put a class, uh, class name and then we put uh, the name of the, of the method. <clears throat> And uh, we come to the uh, to our first demo. Uh, in this demo, I will show you a few uh, easy uh, testing uh, techniques: uh, how to test methods that determine the value, how to test void methods, methods which are throwing exception, and raising an event. Uh, I've prepared a testing project for that. I have a pretty simple class here with the two maps two methods. Uh, one is returning the value, one is void. And uh, what uh, in this method uh, requires uh, refactoring, but we can clearly, clearly see uh, three execution paths here. So one uh, check should be if user is admin, uh, one if user is the same user who do the reservation and uh, the third uh, test should be that our test returns false for uh, for invalid user. Uh, and uh, let's let's create a testing project. If you type test here, sorry. If you type test here, Visual Studio proposes uh, like the, um, the templates for, te for unit testing projects. It can be MS test and unit and X unit. I will use that one. Uh, to apply convention uh, for my project, I will add name testing fundamentals. Testing fundamentals uh, unit tests. Ah, uh, unit tests. Sorry, it looks like I did not I did not remove my project. Okay, I just copy. <clears throat> I just copy my existing. Uh, 
so uh, at first uh, it uh, creates us a unit test default uh, class. So let's rename it and uh, test our reservation class. So also our default method uh, here uh, has fact attribute, and it means that this method is uh, actually test method. Uh, let's see uh, the scenarios again. So I've already prepared a test, so I will just copy them and uh, explain uh, how to uh, deal with, <laughs> with tests. So uh, let's uh, check the first scenario that, that user uh, that um, admin is canceling. Um, admin is canceling this reservation. So I will update this one. Yeah. Inside the uh, testing method, we use a triple A uh, approach. Uh, so we have three areas here. First area is a range. Uh, here we define our uh, our var var variables for uh, for testing. So let's create a reservation here. Uh, the second uh, and and add reference. The second area uh, is act. Here we do our action and change uh, and uh, call our methods for testing. So our method returns boolean. So uh, I just uh, I just call my method and uh, have a result for that. And the second, uh, uh, the last uh, area is assertion. Uh, here we. Uh, check our results. So for that, we use a class called assert. It's all about uh, X unit for now, but an unit has the same assert as I remember. Um, uh, MS test also have assert, but they uh, have different attributes. So it doesn't matter. Uh, our the result is Boolean, so we can use the true or uh, false static methods uh, for that purpose. Okay, and let's uh, let's run tests. So we can run them by using uh, our menu tests run tests, or we can run them uh, with a uh, with a menu here. So we have two options here. I have two options here. Uh, run tests uh, the same as here. We'll run our tests by Visual Studio and run unit tests option. I will run uh, it uh, with uh, Resharper. So I will use Resharper. And my test passes. Let's add a few more tests. And uh, I will just copy them for faster demo. So I covered a few more scenario that same user is canceling. I did uh, more, <laughs> more arrangement here. And uh, it also should return true. And uh, if some another user in, is canceling, my method should return false. Let's run. And uh, Resharper uh, uh, unit testing sessions, it shows me that uh, I have new tests and I can just, just run them. They are success. Uh, but uh, what is something uh, went wrong and our user in that method uh, comes as null. So if we use a TDD approach, it means that we write our tests at first and then we uh, write functionality. So probably we have um, a test here uh, that expect us to return false if user comes as null. So we have a bug here, <laughs> definitely. And uh, we can have uh, two possible expected results to check a user if it's now or uh, to um, or to throw exception for example and let's check uh, let's check for a throwing exception I will modify my code and also I would like to refactor it so we uh, will see how 
how we can refactor with the confidence. Yep, the kids are bought. And um, I will just throw I will just throw an exception here, <clears throat> argument exception here. And uh, let's check whether tests are uh, still running. Yes, and let's add a new test to check if uh, how, how to check uh, that our uh, exception is throwing. So I will add test. This effect. And I've added throws argument exception. Uh, again, we should do some arrangement here. Uh, but to test um, uh, to test methods uh, which throw exception, we can use uh, like acting and assertion in the same time. So we can call assert. Here we have uh, throws method. Uh, for throws method, we can uh, use uh, we can type actual type of our exception. So it is argument exception. And to call my method, I use lambda. And my triple A will look like this. Let's call it. Oh, it works. Uh, okay, but uh, also in this uh, test case, um, so actually we see that uh, now we also are, uh, are testing edge cases, but uh, also we can test, for example, our error message here. So uh, to make that uh, possible, uh, we can um, set up variable for that. Uh, oh, error. Let it be. Result error. And uh, we can call assert equal. Um, result error message. Uh, let's check if it works, if it works. It works, uh, but do you remember the characteristic of a good unit test that our test should not be too specific. And here we made our test too specific because we, uh, we check actual string. And uh, for testing spring, strings, uh, probably it's better to use uh, not to general uh, to general approach. And I will uh, show you an example. So that is too specific, specific. And let's make it um, a bit more general. To make it general, uh, we can use another uh, another. Um, methods like start with and contains with because uh, probably we're not expecting to have some specific message here we're just interested in having error in the message and uh, showing us that user is invalid and also uh, expectation for us uh, can be uh, like case ins insensitivity so uh, when we check strings, we also check strings with uh, case uh, sen in case sensitive format. So, uh, if my um, message has uh, uh, uppercase for in invalid, here I can uh, test uh, lowercase using additional 
uh, additional uh, parameter, a string, a string comparison. And let's check how it works. If it works. Yeah, it works. Uh, and uh, let's go to the void methods quickly. So here we have void method, which is uh, updating our user and which is, uh, which is tr triggering invoking some event here. So we have event handler with grid type. And uh, this method has two, uh, two scenarios. Uh, if it updates a uh, user and if it invokes an event. And I will just copy methods. So uh, if you'd like to have like a general, uh, general behavior for our method, we can use when called uh, as a scenario. So uh, it means that uh, we test only one scenario here. So I've added owner uh, for uh, with some uh, I I added owner and I would like to uh, to update reservation. So here my reservation does not have owner and I set someone. So let's check. Okay, it works. And how to test method with events? It's actually also is easy. We just need to uh, to sub uh, to subscribe to that event using sender and arcs. Um, using sender uh, and arcs, and also use use lambda uh, for su a subscription. And our tests uh, will verify if our ID, uh, which is as a parameter, uh, would not be empty uh, in the uh, in the results. And let's run. Okay, it works. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> um, and uh, also, which thing I would like to show you again. Uh, so we have uh, maybe sometimes something is changed and a lot of our tests became broken and we cannot uh, like update them fast. So probably we don't need to uh, Comment everything. Uh, we can just uh, add uh, skip here, and our tests uh, will be ignored. Uh, so how we can do it? Skip and define some reason. Maybe fix later. And when I run all my tests. So you see that uh, here I have the sections like ignored and, but please create a task to update such unit tests because unit tests matters. And uh, what else? Uh, also one, use, uh, one more useful, uh, useful thing. Uh, so for example, I have another uh, simple class math, math uh, and it just uh, adds uh, two numbers and here we have pretty simple result so we expect uh, our exec uh, one execution path and if we add one plus two it should be equal to three uh, but what if i would like to test um, uh, to test uh, for example uh, uh, sum of uh, sum of zero. So in this case, uh, in this case, I can use uh, additional thing. I will just copy a class here. Uh, so and let's fix. Okay, copy. I will copy reference. Ah, okay. I will just uh, show you it how it works. So, to test sum of zeros and sum of one plus two, I can create two pretty similar similar uh, tests, but uh, I can make it easier just using uh, not 
uh, not fact, but theory attribute. And uh, with inline uh, attributes here, it gives us uh, the ability to use uh, parameters in our method. So I can um, add here A, B, and expected result. And then I call this method uh, in, in action. I just use parameters instead of uh, some variables. And it's, it's pretty useful. And I think that's it from my first demo. <clears throat> and uh, as you probably saw, uh, and maybe with your experience, you can see that testing in the real world uh, looks a bit different. Uh, and uh, it looks different because uh, I have uh, I had a simple uh, simple classes, and usually we have a lot of dependencies in our class and. Um, in the real world, uh, these dependencies uh, sometimes uh, make our classes uh, hard to test. So uh, to make our classes testable, we need to refactor them at first uh, to apply loosely coupled design. And what does it mean? So uh, when we test the class, we choose use an object that talks to external resource we can replace this object with a fake object, which is called, uh, which is called test double. <clears throat> test double. And uh, we need to have, so I'm talking about refactoring of your existing code, how to make it testable. Uh, how we can refactor our code to make it testable? We have uh, three steps. So if, at first, you need to extract uh, a code that uses an external resource into a separate class and isolate if it from the rest of your code. Uh, then uh, next, uh, we can extract an interface from that class because we can create any implementation of that interface and have a fake implementation just for unit testing. So this uh, class we can leave for production uh, code and this uh, can be used uh, in the testing. And finally, uh, you modify your class under test to talk to this interface instead of concrete implementation. And uh, in this way, our class becomes loosely coupled and testable. But uh, how we can <laughs> refactor our code and um, so uh, with the simple words, we need just to remove a lines where a new instance is created uh, because it makes my class tightly coupled and dependent on a given implementation. Instead of new in my object, uh, I need to program it with interface uh, thinking and uh, to apply interface from outside. So for this purpose, we can use dependency injection. Uh, we can pass our interface as a parameter of the method. Uh, so it's here. Uh, initialize a property is here. Or we can set dependency via constructor. Is a, uh, we are a constructor with uh, parameters. But uh, some DI frameworks cannot inject uh, dependencies via properties or methods. Uh, for example, simple injector and aftofac just do not, do not support the property injection. And the preferred approach for DI in .NET uh, is uh, to use a constructor injection, like the, the last one where dependencies are passed to a class through its constructor. This approach is uh, supported by all DI frameworks and it's considered as the best practice for implemented DI in net applications. And uh, also unit tests should not touch external resources. Uh, one, more, one more time, uh, because it's a job for integration tests, but we can still test the logic in our classes with external dependencies. And in the next demo session, we'll talk about mocking. Uh, we'll talk about mocking. <clears throat> also here, I added uh, a bit, uh, some information about testing statics uh, because, we, because it uh, can be tricky and challenging because of these dependencies inside. So, 
with static uh, methods uh, and classes, we do not create an instance. And here we can have limited control over dependencies inside. Like static, static classes and methods often, often rely on static uh, methods or external resources. So static can have static inside, or it can rely on databases, file systems, network, uh, some external APIs. And uh, I've added an example here. So <laughs> in this code, it's uh, pretty hard to extract the stream writer from that. So this, uh, to refactor this code, to make it testable, it can be really cha challenging. And uh, I just, it just, uh, come common way is just to refactor it, ref uh, right? Re rewrite it totally and and then to test. Um, there are even some um, not uh, free mocking uh, mocking libraries like commercial tools like Microsoft Fakes uh, or Type Mock Isolator. Uh, and uh, I saw information that they allows you to uh, to mock static methods and static uh, static classes, but I'm not sure uh, how it works. So it's <laughs> it's commercial tools. Um, it's commercial tools. Yeah. So that's why I've added a few um, a few links here. So if you are interested more in testing static, you just can uh, can go here and um, read some more examples. And let's go to the next demo. <clears throat> demo about mocking. I again prepared uh, some project. A few seconds, please. I hope you see my Visual Studio. Yes. Cool. Uh, okay. Mm, I have created a couple of classes which simulate uh, booking of the table in the restaurant. Uh, uh, so I have created like a table booking service. It has a couple of dependencies. It is dependent on table repository, on user repository, on notification service. Uh, it has loosely coupled design. You see that I have a lot of interfaces here. Uh, I have a constructor with uh, parameters. Um, and I have only one method, book table. Uh, with some parameters like table, no table number, customer no name, and uh, number of people for that uh, that table. Uh, also, I have a few scenarios here, and my method actually calls uh, uses uh, uses my uh, my repositories inside. Uh, so let's check. Um, uh, which scenarios we can test here and how to how to do actually this testing. So um, I have already created unit test project and added um, added a class. So all dependencies which we have in our uh, in our production class we should have them here. Uh, and uh, as I said in the uh, in the slides, uh, we should have like test doubles for uh, for my repositories here, and uh, that's where the um, uh, mocking uh, libraries are coming. So I use and substitute, and it actually uh, replaces. It uh, gives me uh, ability to set up my uh, my services here, and uh, also for my uh, for my test class, I have a constructor here, and here I can just init my table booking service with uh, these uh, mocked uh, repositories. And uh, how we can test uh, our method here? So uh, how we use that mocking? So in the range, so let's check, uh, for example, first scenario. Uh, so the table is available and uh, user exists, and we just can book a table and send a uh, send a reservation notification. So it means that in our flow we go through all these uh, lines of code, we call all these methods, and uh, mocking tools gives us uh, give us ability to to like replace uh, in runtime the expected result for our methods. So 
I can do mocking for a table repository. I expect when we call table repository is table available method for my table number, uh, I expect that it will return true. For user repository, uh, when I call user exists for my customer name, I also expect that this user exists. Uh, when I call table repository book table, I expect that it did everything okay and returned um, successful response for me. And when I act, uh, so I expect that my notification service received uh, a calling uh, received a call so actually it uh, it called send reservation notification method it just uh, it's simple simple testing method uh, which has message message uh, as parameter uh, and uh, also i can test uh, my um, my method that it just received uh, that it was called uh, once twice it doesn't matter so i can use this assertion here and uh, if my uh, incoming uh, parameter value doesn't matter i can use arcs any uh, for my parameters it's uh, applicable for uh, all types but if i expect that i should receive uh, this notification only once i can type direct number and also if i expect uh, my message to be the right message i also can uh, can put it uh, here so i uh, for example i will check at first one scenario uh, let's run tests Yeah, it's work. It works. Uh, but uh, what if we? Uh, so wh why I added uh, this check? So for example, if in my method I made a mistake and call somewhere notification one more time, uh, so it means that it means that my uh, my test should fail. Huh? And it's not. <laughs> yeah, this test is not failing because I expect like uh, j just calling of that. But this scenario will find an error in my code. Yep. So that's why it's useful. <clears throat> Let's remove a bug. Let's fix a bug. Uh, and a few more scenarios. Uh, so if we throw exception in our test service, it means that we are going only through that lines of code. That's why we can mock only this method and don't pay attention to this uh, or, or this or, or this. So that's why I have mocking only for is testable. Is test available, and uh, I expect that in this case, my test, uh, my uh, test available method will return true, or false, just to check that exception. So we already saw this syntaxes. And uh, if I would like to check this scenario, so if my user does not exist, I need to add user and check if user repository called that add user method. I will do the following thing. I need to, uh, again, it will be success scenario. So I need to mock everything here. So I mock here, uh, this method, this method, and expect uh, here the false and uh, success message. And uh, I, in assertion, I expect that a user repository added user once, so not twice. And it added actually my, uh, my user and uh, one more uh, one more thing about uh, testing static just again so we can uh, easily test static uh, methods and classes which are looking like this one here you can see i don't have any external dependencies i just have a result so i can test it easily uh, i can test it easily but if i have a static class looking like this 
it can be hard to test. And I have a few more minutes, so I will go to my last part of presentation uh, to, the, um, to the AI part. So AI for unit testing. Um, modern development changed this year because of uh, ChatGPT and uh, GitHub Copilot from open AI uh, company. Uh, Copilot was first announced at July 2021 as an AI payer programming tool that suggests the code snippets based on the context of your code and code, code language. And uh, on the ground, it uses uh, ChatGPT3 uh, uh, as, a, as a machine learning model. And originally, it was possible to use uh, it only in VS Code as a plugin uh, and also as a plugin for Rider. Uh, but currently, Copilot extension is also available into Visual Studio 2022, but with version not lower than uh, this one. Uh, also, uh, we have a 30, uh, 60 days trial peri uh, period for Copilot, and uh, I recommend to, to try it at least. And then you will pay $10, uh, $10 per month or $100 uh, dollars per year. Uh, ChatGPT is new tool, it's just looking as a chat announced in November 2022, and currently we already have a payable version GPT. Plus. Uh, the difference is uh, that uh, the simple chat GPT uh, works slow, sometimes it's loading, showing you some errors, and uh, chat GPT plus it has better results, it uh, works faster, so, but it costs uh, $20 per month. And uh, what, uh, what else? Um, for my demo, uh, surprise, surprise, for a second demo, whole classes, not whole, but actually uh, three of four classes was created by ChatGPT. And uh, I used uh, also ChatGPT to, uh, to help me with testing scenarios. So if uh, ChatGPT will work, I will show you, I will show you which request I made. And if it doesn't, I will just show you a screenshot because uh, ChatGPT uh, is not working today properly. Uh, give me a few seconds to concentrate uh, on the um, like general ability of ChatGPT and uh, Copilot and just concentrate on the unit testing purposes uh, as my presentation is about testing. So, um, I just made a um, request to generate some testing code for C Sharp with three classes in loosely coupled design, add some program CS file with dependency injection framework. And uh, I did, uh, uh, I, I would like to simulate booking table in the restaurant. So it created me, <laughs> my interfaces, uh, my classes, uh, it uh, adds even the comments here. So it's uh, really, really, really useful. Uh, also, it's, um, it's useful to, uh, to ask him or it or she uh, to write unit tests. If it will load, I will show you. Um, but, 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 uh, so you need to copy like a whole class here. Uh, why it's in the bottom? Okay, so I made the request looking like this. Cover this class uh, with unit tests using X unit, using N substitute to mock object. And I just copy my simple class. It uh, gives, me, uh, gives me a class and let's check if it's working. Okay, 
Let's check. Ah, it, it's failed for uh, for my previous class. So you see the tests passed actually, uh, but you should pay attention. Some sometimes it it creates odd variable syntax is not the best, and also uh, sometimes it's not working properly. And uh, if you would like to test, for example, a method uh, like this one with dependencies, it's really hard to test it with um, uh, with ChatGPT because it does not have a context of uh, of your code, so it won't generate you probably the good naming for interfaces. Uh, it, you should uh, write direct um, direct request from what do you need to do, and also um, I would like <laughs> to ask you to pay really uh, good attention on uh, what code you are copying into these chats uh, and copilot because uh, <laughs> like the developers. Uh, tells us that uh, developers are responsible for that code from ChatGPT uh, and uh, from Copilot. But if you copy some production data here, it's probably not, not a good decision. So please, uh, please be, um, be like pretty, pretty accurate with this. Also for testing uh, experience with uh, ChatGPT, um, you can ask him just simple, simple, uh, simple questions to know some information. So I've uh, asked him about, or her, or it, uh, about some uh, static class dependencies where we cannot test uh, static, and it also gives me some cool information. So, so I should not walk through a lot of, uh, a lot of. Um, a lot of links and write every, uh, read everything. And also I would like to show, oh, okay, it's not working. That's the free chat GPT. And also I would like to quickly show you a uh, copilot. And I will use uh, a code for this purpose. So the benefit of Copilot uh, instead of using ChatGPT is that it's integrated into your uh, IDE. And we have, I have uh, here, uh, here like the mark that I'm using Copilot. Uh, and uh, also it's in the context of your code. So probably if I add, um, if I, for example, uh, add uh, the comment, it should generate me uh, the code uh, related to my uh, to, to my classes. So, if I, for example, make a comment, uh, it will give me some um, I don't know some uh, some notifications. What can I do? But I will just uh, start from using. Start from usings, uh, so you can see that it gives me some information, and then I, okay, system, ah, uh, that's odd. Okay, couple of minutes, couple of seconds, and we will finish. So I just copy my usings required to test a table booking project, and I need to type to enters and let's wait. Yep. And that's how the magic works. Uh, it generated me uh, like all my testing class with four main scenarios. Um, yeah, the one class, uh, the one method is not finished. So I will just remove it. Um, but also you should be accurate because sometimes it has the problems with the, uh, with the actual classes, uh, with the actual classes because uh, iBooking uh, service has interface called 
eye table booking and they did it in per in purpose to show you the that problem and also um uh, it looks like it uh, missed uh, one more uh, one uh, one mocking scenario for notification service because it's uh, this project is uh, the same as i'll show you uh, that i showed you so notification service is missed uh, also um, truth and table is valid so it uses uh like not that convention that I would like to, but I also can uh, can type it as a comment and uh, it will be accounted in that um, uh, in my uh, test. And uh, and also and also uh, the cool thing uh, is that uh, I should uh, I can uh, use any any tooling I would like to and it will generate me code that that I want. Uh, and uh, also a few words about uh, fluent assertions. It's just um, a package which allows you to uh, make assertions in a like human readable way. So instead of making assert, true or false, I can write it. I would like to have my result that should be true. So it's like another way of, um, of uh, making assertions. And uh, I think that's it for my presentation. And I'm ready for some uh, for some questions. As if you have questions, please unmute and ask. <laughs> 